Welcome back. Uh, so this intro uh, will be slightly different. Um, it's more of an emotional side, if anything. Uh, now I approached uh, Crown Tools uh, in Sheffield, England, and uh, I was speaking to a uh, director, actually, uh, Mr. Ed. Um, we were on the phone for a quite a while and uh, we agreed on actually I asked for uh, a few of the scrapers some like like this let's say one inch scrapers uh, for me to show you guys how to shape them profile them sharpen them um, as you see here on the bench on the lathe I got far more tools than I uh, ever imagined and uh, I didn't have the right words to say to him, to, to Mr. Ed. Um, I mean, thank you very much for this lovely gift. It's uh, sometimes it's like a great feeling to, to be appreciated for everything that you do, um, everything that you try to, to make uh, from your career and everything. And uh, uh, stuff like this uh, sometimes it's like a, when it's rough and everything it's sometimes a nice push in the back and uh, like, you know like a pat on the shoulder and um, just keep on going you're doing a great job and so um, like I said I'm I don't have the right words to describe how I feel and uh, I couldn't express my, my feelings in Croatian let alone on, on English uh, but thank you, Mr. Ed, for uh, all of this lovely gift. Um, I'll bring you in a bit closer and um, you get to see these tools uh, a little bit in close. And uh, now, just to get this out of the way, uh, Ed sent me these tools not to um, promote them in a way that you have to buy these tools. He sent me to try it try it for myself uh, give my honest opinion on these and uh, just if I like the tools use them and uh, that's it so yeah I'll bring them closer and uh, you see what I'm talking about so like I said uh, I asked for a few scrapers and uh, these two I already used just a bit so this is one inch wide by an eight mil thick or ten mil actually uh, ten mil thick so uh, this scraper is uh, excellent for bottom of the bowls especially on uh, hollow forms as well uh, this will be used uh, actually is used um, in uh, four way videos with uh, uh, enclosed form. So this is the heavy duty scraper. This is uh, 38 mil wide, uh, 10 mil thick. Uh, this is a real beast. And, um, and now uh, these tools with the black handle, uh, it's a cryogenic uh, line, so super heavy duty, and uh, where uh, they last a long time. Uh, the edge. So this is another. This is already sort of shaped. Try to get it out. This one is already shaped pretty much where I want it. Uh, so a little asymmetric curve. Uh, also 10 mil thick, uh, 25 mil uh, wide. Here is another heavy duty one. Uh, this is a square end uh, which I'll shape uh, to my uh, desired uh, shape uh, which I'll actually show you how I do it uh, so I have a couple of lighter tools this is again one inch wide 25 mil wide but it's six mil thick and uh, these are much lighter so uh, this uh, one of these actually will be shaped as a shear scraper which I'll show you so this is again the same tool and maybe a few of these I'll left 
uh, square end just in case if I need to, I don't know, uh, change the shape or for any specific job then I can shape it later and this is one of the narrow ones this is 12 mil wide I believe yep again 6 mil uh, thick nice light tool for lighter work and uh, this is round nose Uh, round nose also six mil uh, thick uh, I believe it's 20 mil or 19 mil wide 19 mil so that's uh, three quarters of an inch I believe uh, this one probably uh, since I don't have much use for uh, like this bull nose shape I'll extend this uh, left part a bit down and uh, then it's a asymmetric curve um, which I'll show you a little bit later. Uh, now here is something quite unique to me. So just to get it out. So this is their hollowing uh, system uh, revolution. Uh, this is a MIDI, MIDI one I believe. Uh, it's a ring tool. Uh, but it also has a, a high-speed steel scraper uh, insert, which much I much more preferred versus the uh, carbides. So that's this tool, and this is the bigger version. So this is their uh, bigger version. Just my hands are dusty, so. <laughs> But nevertheless, it will get dusty and it's nice padded soft handle, but it's extremely heavy uh, Also, I can adjust these necks uh, To whatever work you do and uh, you can extend the, the bar out You can see now it's it's really long, so you can hollow a really deep uh, hollow forms. You can see here all the all the attachments you can have on it. But like I said, I really like the. Uh, high-speed steel scrapers here is the evolution series uh, hollowers as well so these are nice tools really nice and uh, these are really nice and hefty and uh, now to more of a traditional tools uh, these were now uh, all cryogenic and this is M42 uh, cryogenic steel so this is a uh, 10 mil uh, spindle gouge uh, this is a uh, 12 mil uh, ball gouge which which I already sharpened try to show you I already sharpened it uh, uh, about 35 degrees on the nose and uh, long wings uh, for hollowing, uh, which you saw in the uh, four-way videos. So I, this is the gouge I used for uh, top third of the enclosed form. So this is the big uh, 16 mil uh, ball gouge. Uh, this is already sharpened from the from the package, although I can see the line here, so it's on, at the edge uh, It's not perfectly sharp. So uh, But nevertheless, I'm going to change this uh, grind to more uh, my uh, asymmetric grind from Richard Raffin and uh, you all know uh, this traditional uh, actually a standard uh, crown a ball gouge which I use pretty much in every video on cross grain work until it 
wears wears down. So. This is something that I don't use at all, but uh, on some of occasions I might use it. Uh, so this is a spindle roughing gouge. So this is uh, the pure example of a tool uh, which is not used on the balls. So this is only for the spindle, spindle roughing uh, gouge. And. Uh, this is the one I quite like. It's uh, just to get it out of the package. So this is the continental style spindle gouge. Um, once this uh, gets sharpened, it will be probably as a, a spindle roughing gouge as well, uh, which is my preferred uh, option for this continental spindle gouge. They were great for that application. You can now see them in all of the, the glory. Like I said, I asked only for a, a few scrapers and I got far more than I ever imagined. So uh, once again, thank you Ed from Crown Tools. Um, like I said, I'm not obligated to, to make any specific video, uh, not to bother you with uh, like you have to buy uh, Crown Tools or anything like that. Um, my only like condition is just use them if you like them use them and and that's it and I mean that's really generous and uh, I really have no words that could describe my gratitude uh, so and uh, my viewers as well um, thank you very much for supporting my channel and uh, that I'm trying to pass on the knowledge and uh, like I said thank you very much everyone so uh, in this video I'm just going to focus now a bit on uh, how I go about uh, shaping the, the scrapers these uh, that we use the most of the time okay so like I said uh, one of these uh, uh, 6 mil thick 25 mil wide I'm going to convert to uh, like a shear scrape tool so uh, one of these edge this one will get round over a bit so it's much easier to slide on the on the tool rest uh, but for the shape here at the, just to focus it a bit here uh, so the shape is like maybe uh, six mil go down from the edge and now just connect it with a slight curve so that's basically the the shape that I want uh, now this can be used on a, not just for a shear scraper but this proportion of the curve so that can be used um, let's say on the flatter curves like uh, platters uh, they have a much shallower curve so you just have uh, have to have enough variation in your scrapers uh, this curve here so you can blend uh, pretty much any curve so uh, this is what I'm going to be aiming for with this one okay so on this big daddy so this is 38 mil 10 uh, 10 thick uh, scraper uh, you already see I just didn't make it the curve that I want so all I want to do is because this curve is just too unnatural let's say for me uh, I'm going to just make a shallow curve here like so and remove sorry about the noise my father-in-law is across the, in his shop at the table saw so something like that it's not perfect so I just want a nice shallow curve, um, just this point removed and uh, with time I'm going to shape it as I want. So this is just uh, to be uh, too much of a steel to remove at once uh, unnecessarily uh, to shape it the way I like and uh, I can leave this one uh, let's say free to 
to change if any particular job requires uh, any different kind of curve, let's say. Uh, this one uh, I have already shaped, so you can see it's a, a little bit straight here and then a curve. So this is a, for the bottom of the balls, uh, quite good. And uh, this one is already pretty much shape, shaped the way I want. Although, uh, what I can do is just make this uh, like so so this will be for smaller bowls and uh, this one will be for a little bit wider ones so on this one I don't have to remove all that much uh, now for this uh, square end what I'm going to do is just make nice curve like so for now at least so this can be used on a variety of bowls and uh, all i want to remove is this and sharpen it and that will be it for now uh, this uh, bull nose uh, i'm going to leave this right part here but I'm going to extend the left cutting edge a bit like so down so it's more of a asymmetric curve so all the red will be gone pretty much so I'll have all this longer here edge to scrape let's say inside of a narrow box uh, this narrow one uh, 12 mil wide just it just make a slight curve to the right not much just slight and for this one since this shear scraper will be uh, replacing the um, this curve on this one I want just a little more more of a curve than this so I'm going to leave a flatter spot here and just make it a bit more curvy like so again I'll remove this portion here so you can see now with uh, this I have much shallower curve here I have a little bit more of a curve then with this one I have a lot more curve if it's much more closed in or uh, a more of a curvy piece <laughs> so you can see now the variety of the curves that you can have on the scrapers now by any means you don't have to have all these scrapers um, you can pretty much do anything with uh, maybe a shallower one and a little bit more curved one let's like something like this or like this uh, so with the sharpening now in terms of how I'm going to remove all of this red part uh, I'm going to actually use angle grinder with a thin um, disc grinding disc a cutting disc and I just cut away as close to this as I can uh, that way I'll just remove uh, the quickest way to remove the excess metal this is quite a big piece of metal and uh, while I'm cutting off I'll actually introduce the angle here uh, which at the nose of any scraper that I use uh, is around 45 degrees now you can uh, by now you can uh, do this on the grinder uh, without any problems uh, but you have to be aware of some of the uh, stuff uh, like uh, you can overheat your tools so you can either um, 
cool the best option would be actually to cool it like every two three seconds uh, cool it down and the light touch don't uh, overheat your tools if you can hold it here uh, then it's quite cool so if you don't don't get burned so just light touch take your time like I said I have many of these to do so I'll use angle grinder and I'll just uh, cut away this excess and introduce the bell here at the same time so uh, now I'll do that and uh, I'll be back with you uh, once that step is done uh, at the grinder see here uh, what I've done uh, with this so uh, this is now just roughly uh, shaped with the uh, angle grinder uh, the bevel also and uh, this will save time on the grinder here now uh, you'll see in the video this will be a speed up process uh, I'm going to switch between the scrapers Since, uh, once this gets a little bit hot I'll switch to another one and back and forth um, and I won't be dunking them into water uh, just I'm going to after I'm done with the shaping uh, to let's say 95% all I, basically I want to be left with final sharpening uh, let's say on the CBN um, that's where I'm going to left, uh, leave them to cool down in, uh, completely and then I'm going to resharpen them uh, to their final uh, shape let's say Now uh, I'm at the final stage where I just need to touch it up uh, and get the burr on top. So this edge here, I just uh, put it down on a piece of sandpaper, used one, uh, 240, 320, something like that. Uh, and I just remove any remnants of the burr, rough, rough burr when I uh, rough uh, this bevel out. Uh, this is on all of my scrapers uh, 45. Uh, when they are like like this kind of shape so um, for instance on this one here at the nose I'm around 45 degrees but here I'm much uh, steeper so this edge is not so uh, grabby so uh, but you see how I sharpen this this is far more freehand than this one so with this one the platform is set and all I do is just lightly bring it up to wheel. Until I feel the, the burr is raised just a bit on the corner here and that's it. So this is what I'm calling and uh, Richard Raffin also calls a uh, shear scraper. So only this edge is rounded over, this one is sort of sharp, uh, but it's not sharp enough to, to make it uh, for a detail, let's say. So what I'm going to do is just uh, lightly touch up this corner here. And try to show you. So there is a secondary bevel here, so I only remove this just slight round over which it has, so this is, so it's not sharp. And uh, I remove that and now I have nice corner here, and you can see the bevel here, and I hope you can see the, the burr here at the top. So this one, like I said, it's far more uh, freehand. So I rough it 
uh, on our coarser wheel and I just removed a little bit of the steel here uh, so I don't have much grinding here at this primary bevel let's say all I'm asking here uh, so I have a nice fresh uh, grind it's enough like 2 mil from the top okay so same principle I just uh, touch this flat spot on the pe uh, piece of sandpaper and this is now freehand so I find the primary bevel here at the nose and I bring it up to wheel just a little spot on this Okay, so this is how it looks on the bevel. It doesn't look all that like a book for, for book, let's say. Try to get in the light. Uh, but it's nice continuous curve and here as well you can probably see the burr here. And uh, you can see now the curve as well. So with this one a little bit shallower curve uh, if I go on the platform this is now all rugged looking uh, it's looking quite rugged and all of this bottom portion doesn't concern me at all this can be whatever it wants to look all I'm is concerned so it's around 2 mil from the top edge here and uh, I'll do this partially uh, freehand as well so I find the primary bevel on the nose Again, nice burr and try to show you. Trying to show you here the the bevel, and I can feel the burr here. It's quite nice. Got this little guy. Again, uh, it's 45 degrees. You just test the angle here, and that's that's okay this is just slightly to the right uh, curved maybe two degrees something like that so I don't go past the the center here and I just leave the handle to the right I forgot to sand this top part And that's it. So nice fresh burr. So you remember this one? This one. This was a bull nose type. So all I did is, for now at least, extend this left uh, part. And uh, what I want to do is just shape it, uh, sharpen it like this. And uh, this will be excellent for small boxes and grain boxes. Uh, this is again. I do it by holding in my hand. I find the, the bevel on the nose. Okay, so you can see it now. This would be excellent for little boxes and green boxes. Okay, now just uh, this is how it looks after polishing, and uh, all now is uh, what it's left to do is just move smoothly on the platform and until you see the change color at the very tip of the. Uh, scraper.
Okay, so this is now how it looks. So one single bevel. I can increase uh, this secondary bevel, so I don't have to sharpen all of this bevel. But if I uh, put the platform in the correct spot, then uh, all I have to do from now on is just uh, touch up work. And uh, I can feel the nice burr, and you can see nice shallow curve on the scraper. So if you move nice and fluidly, then you transfer that to the tool. Yeah, I hope uh, this uh, clarifies a bit the process I uh, go about uh, reshaping the tips of profile the, the scrapers. Now, what I have to do if I'm not going to change the handles is actually add uh, a color maybe here at the ferrule, uh, add a different color so on the bench here when there are shavings and everything I can uh, pretty much easily uh, in speed recognize which tool is uh, which so um, yeah this uh, handles looks looks excellent and they're nice they're nicely made uh, but just need to something to distinguish the tools from each other uh, but these are creature comforts now it doesn't uh, need to be done like I said don't have you don't need to be intimidated by this process it takes a while uh, to to grind into whatever shape you want uh, there isn't a particular shape like that it needs to be done I'm trying to so these shapes uh, I went uh, and this can change on the fly so if I need let's say let's say this scraper but I need just a little bit more curve on the right and a little bit longer this left curve I can do that on the fly and change it if I need to if I have to so these are adaptable tools you change change them if uh, and when you need them and um, like I said I know there will be many questions about this usually they are 45 degrees at the nose uh, these uh, shallow curve are done on the platform so the bevel is uh, all the way around the same but uh, this one is done in hand freehand and uh, it varies the bevel so from the 45 on the nose it's quite steep here uh, at the side so it's not too grabby so that is a little bit of a process to learn but uh, it helps tremendously tremendously on a, on a working aspect of it so yeah I hope uh, this will help out uh, some of you that had questions about scrapers how to convert them and uh, uh, like I said you can go with uh, high speed steel bars like this um, but be aware this one isn't uh, as hard as these uh, so there's a trade-off obviously and um, I mean these are hard enough and they can be sharpened enough uh, and be sharp burr enough so they scrape nicely so that's the, the another aspect that uh, like for instance the carbides are too strong of a steel too hard uh, steels uh, and they can't be sharpened in a way uh, to raise the burr quality burr uh, to get a nice clean uh, scrape like uh, I'll show you a little demo with these, uh, with one of these, and uh, you'll see how m how much clean surface I can get. So, um, once again, thank you Ed for sending all of these lovely tools. Thank you all for support, and uh, I hope this will help out many of you. And uh, if there are any questions, please feel free to leave a comment, and I usually try to answer all of the comments. So. Um, yeah, uh, I'll do a little demo and um, see you in the next video. This is a bigger one. Need to bring the rest down a bit.
thinner too, so the rest needs to, needs to go up a bit. I'm looking for a nice fine uh, dust. You can see the surface now. That's excellent surface. This you may not feel it, but and see it. But this is um, maybe 180 for a few seconds, and this will be done. Uh, a little bit rougher here where the wood doesn't spin as much, as fast, so I need to go a little bit slower. And like I said, here when I remove this little bit of rounded portion, I can make a decoration. if this was a bottom and uh, with this one I can use it uh, and tilt it up on edge and it can slide because this portion is rounded over can see now the surface that's pretty excellent so once again thank you Ed for sending these lovely tools and uh, yeah, see you in the next video